so good morning everyone last class we were discussing a programming language a branch of programming language that was actually developed so that people who are not from computer science background okay they can actually learn programming and they can uh, understand the programmings so we are talking about a branch of programming that such as COBOL, PLI and we'll then talk about uh, we have already talked about uh, Lisp so we'll not go there Okay, so we'll talk about COBOL, PLI and BASIC. So this is one uh, a branch of programming language that was developed for common use or developed in a way that everyone who is not from computer science background, they can actually understand these programs. Okay, so they name it everything for everybody. So a programming language that could be uh, used by everyone. Okay, that can be easy to read, write, but also it can be uh, uh, dev, uh, it can be used by uh, for every other purpose for like for scientific computing be that business computing okay so first we talked about pli pli contributed some of the very new concepts that we uh, have is still using now first one was uh, first unit level concurrency that we could execute multiple tasks concurrently there's the, the concept of exception handling okay how we can detect and handle runtime errors the idea was that normal uh, uh, whenever we are developing, it is being developed by the scientist or computer scientist, they actually understand whenever there's an error, okay? But the general people, they tend to make more mistakes like that. That's why they need to introduce exception handling and you need to show that you are making this type of error so that the user, okay, who is not so much, <coughs> who is not so much familiar with these ideas, okay, they can actually solve the issue. And then we have switch selectable uh, recursion procedure okay first pointer data type which could point to the memory address and then first array cross sections i talked about in the last class about this as well so it had many new features okay but the problem was developing new features first of all they were not designed properly okay and another problem was at you were trying to do both you were trying to develop a uh, include every features of scientific computing you are trying to develop every features of business computing okay it actually became too large and too complex so even though the idea is very praiseworthy the approach was actually still it had a lot of room for improvement okay so then uh, there's there was another programming language that was also have the same design goals so that is as you can see the design goals here are it was developed by dartmouth and kurz kemini so Again, it should be easy to learn and use for non-science students. So who are not from this uh, so-called computer science or uh, <clears throat> technical backgrounds. Okay. So again, your basic is another programming language. It must be pleasant and friendly. So whenever you are using this programming language, okay, the overall environment, the uh, structure, the tokens, then must be simple to understand. The first turnaround for homework. So you could easy, uh, use, easily use it for basic purposes as well not only for complicated scientific purpose okay it should be free okay and but then it can have private access as well and finally the user time is more important than the computer time so here they have uh, understood the concept is that normally whenever we are uh, so far we have designed the programming languages you have seen that it was told it was mentioned specifically that in the programming language okay now, first programming languages, the compiler efficiency was very important and the machine efficiency. So when, you, when we say the machine efficiency or the compiler efficiency, the idea is that uh, the computer has a limited resource. So you need to write program in a way so we don't waste any resources. Okay, So you need to think a lot before developing the programs or sometimes the machine will make you wait. Let's say you have two tasks. Okay, you are trying to uh, do two tasks at a time okay but the machine okay it don't care about that uh what you want to do it just schedules the programs in a way so that it can finish it for in the first third time okay but in this uh basic programming language they change the design goals okay it will not it have to be easy to use and learn at the same time the user time is more important than the computer time so it doesn't matter if, if the computer is not being efficient at all okay as long as the user can be served <coughs> If a uh, user can be served better, okay, you design the algorithm in that way. Let's just think about this. Whenever you click some a button, okay, uh, well, you are using a mobile phone, you need you need to see an instant response, okay. So 
you want to write start writing as soon as possible or you want to start running an application as soon as possible okay so we are saying that we will focus on the user time more than the computer efficiency then we had some uh, for the basic programming language we had a popular dialect that is still used in currently okay uh, so it is called a uh, visual basic and it was the first uh, widely used programming language that used the concept of time sharing okay between different different programs so if you had uh, let's say here you see this is the visual basic here so if you tra trace it back it started with uh, the concept of here basic okay which came from the idea of algol it came from <coughs> a little bit of apl by combining these two concept programming language the simplicity of basic and the features of algol we developed this programming language so here is a sample program to understand what happens so you see this is a loop this is a go go to that you jump from one level to another these are variable declarations you can take uh, even even today in programming we use sometimes delay okay and here is some uh, assignment operation the k equals to zero okay what else so all rest of it almost they're same so the idea the plan they had to make a programming language that is simple and this is actually a lot of simple uh, than machine code if you compare with the current programming languages we have obviously it will not feel so simple but you can at best say this is almost same as the programming language but still it's not that simple but we are comparing in the uh, design criteria of 1980s okay when the other programming languages were actually more different and then after uh, so we're done with the programming languages that were trying to make things simple easy to understand now we'll talk about another set of programming language that was <coughs> introduced to the data abstraction so what is data abstraction <coughs> in object oriented programming you have already uh, heard this word multiple times that object oriented programming provides abstraction 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 so what is actually this abstraction so before going to the details let me again go to the timeline <coughs> so here so the language we're talking about simula 67 is here okay so if you see the idea started um, the concepts of algol okay so it took the concept some concept from algol and it then from simula 67 we have c programming and such as c plus plus okay and there's also another version okay where we went to python as well so let's go back So the first idea of Simula 67 was that we have to develop a programming language, okay, that will work for system simulation. Okay, it was developed in Norway by these two scientists, and it was based on Algol 60 and Simula 1. So instead of uh, uh, instead of discussing the first version of Simula, we are going to the uh, version 67. Okay, so what are the primary contribution of Simula? First of all, it has a code routine that is kind of sub program. It implemented a structure that is called a class, and we use class in C++ today in Java as well. Then classes are basis of data abstraction, and then classes are structures that include the both local data and functions. Okay, so I can go on on and about the class, like what is the importance of class and why we use class. But I guess all of you already know it. Okay, you have already studied class in your C++ course, in your Java course. So I will not go to the details, but I will just uh, focus on one point that is called data abstraction. Now, what does the data abstraction means? So before understanding data abstraction, let me just say about abstraction. So whenever you write a code, let's say you are using the Facebook, okay? <clears throat> in the Facebook, you have different, different functions. Uh, in the Facebook, you can send message to your friend. In the Facebook, you can, uh, let's say, send a picture to your friend. Now, whenever you are sending an text message and whenever you are sending a picture both are actually not same right there are different different techniques to sending a text message and sending a picture but you don't have to worry about that all you need to 
all you need to know is that there's a button called send so i will add my text or i will add my image and then i will click the send how the facebook is or the messenger is sending the text or sending the message is not my concern so this is called the abstraction that means you you are actually hidden from the complicated process of sending image or text from one one user to the another user Okay, another example is that whenever you go to the Facebook, you log in, okay, you in, in, enter your password, you enter your username, okay, and then they somehow verify it's you, and then they let you log in. Now, how they verify, okay, that concept is actually not known to you, and you don't need to know that. So this is also called abstraction. Abstraction means the complex, complex operations, okay, or the complex options that are uh, there in the software they are hidden from the user user don't have to worry about that user will just get a simple button login and the rest will be handled by them so this is the concept of abstraction now the code can be abstracted for various reasons one for to make it simple another one is to make thus their system secure because facebook don't want others to know how they are doing this this is a business uh this is a business idea right that they have already developed now data abstraction means that the, your data that you have in the an object or a class will be actually hidden from other object. So if one object have uh, some variables or some set of data, like if you have your username, password, okay, this, uh, your profile, let's say your email, this will be abstracted. This is your data will be from other user. So this is the concept of uh, programming uh, Simula 67, data abstraction. Now the question is sir, how they are hidden. I know my username, I know my user password. Yes, you know it. But in the Facebook, whenever they store all the informations, okay, let's say they store it into one place, right? Now, no, whenever they're storing into one place, okay, so all the data, let's say they go into the one CPU. But even though they are, all the data are there, one object will not be able to access the information of other object. Okay, let's say that if you just change the profile link, you will not be able to access as another person's profile, even though the data is in the same database. Okay, there's a restriction that protects one user data from another user's data. Okay, so that is also a concept of data abstraction. Now, uh, next one is this, we have to understand this preemptive and non preemptive to understand the next one. So this is a concept from operating system preemptive multitasking. Okay, so in this preemptive what we do, okay, a computer operating system uses some criteria to decide how long to allocate to any task before giving another task to turn. So in preemptive what we do, we actually divide the time, okay, and give tasks for a specific amount of time to every process. Okay. Now the act of taking control of operating system from one task to another task is called preemptive. Okay, so like if you are executing five tasks, so what it will do say the task one, you can take 20 second task two, you will take 10 second and so on. And in the opposite one is non preemptive. Okay, that means instead of uh, giving time, okay, whichever task comes first, okay, the it will be given the time first. Okay, so in non preemptive multitasking okay it says is actually a style of computer multitasking in which the operating system never initiates a context switch that means the change of the program in this one what it does the process actually voluntarily yields the control periodically so means let's say that you have five or uh, two processes process a and b both are executing at the same time so what will happen after executing five seconds the process a will say okay i will pause now let's give the time to process b then after executing five seconds, process B will automatically give control to another waiting process. So to, in short, in preemptive, the operating system decide that, okay, process one, you will get 10 seconds, process two, you will get 20 seconds and so on. Okay. In non-preemptive, the process, they actually cooperate. They decide themselves that, okay, I will run for five seconds, then I will give it to another process. And then it goes on like this. So these are from scheduling algorithms of operating system. But the main idea is here that in this one, the operating system has to take control in this one operating system. Don't. Now, last one is this Algol 68. So it already talked about Algol programming language. Okay, so this this development of Algol 68 is actually a continued development of Algol mm -hmm. from 60, but it's not a superset. Okay, the source of it's a source of different different new ideas such as orthogonality. It contributed data structures. Okay, different user defined data structures. It has reference types. It had dynamic arrays. Okay. And it has impacted, this Algo 60 has impacted all the imperative programming language such as Pascal, C, C++, Java, and so on.